that Liverpool game this weekend, uh, which is pretty big and part of the reason we saw him really shuffle his deck against Copenhagen, there's plenty of reports that we could see Mohamed Salah yeah. back, maybe even in a few hours in the Europa League. Yeah. How much does this move the needle? Will, will his first shot on target be the first goal? Maybe. Good point. Or it could be somebody else. Um, back at training, for sure. Could he get a few minutes? I don't think he can go straight into Sunday having not played since... Oh, but if he plays half an hour in the Europa League and then... Yeah, exactly. But yeah. he might not even be ready for half an hour. I don't know. I find this a little bit like... Um, some sort of mind games from clubs saying, hey, look, he's here, he might play Sunday, he might not, they be worried. <laughs> Who, can you put Vardial against him? Could you have to put Ake, do this? Maybe it looks more to me like the, I, I think he will be on the bench on Sunday, but not start. But does he move the needle? Just his mere presence? Yeah, I guess ball? so. It's always better when he could play, when he's, he's even at least on the bench, than, than having him on the stands. Yeah, I, I think given... Liverpool's front three. I know, obviously, there's there's Darwin people, there's non-Darwin people. Yeah. Luis Diaz looks tired to me, even though I, I love the guy. Yeah, played, Cody right? Gakpo looks terrible to me. Every he time I see well. him play, I don't want to see him play. Um, I think if you can have, if you can have good Darwin, Diaz, and Salah, then you've got a game from the start. From the start, yeah. Yeah, but that's if not going to happen. All right, from the we'll start, see. it can't happen. We'll see. The start. Gab, Erling Haaland doesn't talk much, so were you surprised when he addressed the media in the uh, pre-match City Copenhagen press conference? I was very pleasantly surprised, and I was very pleasantly surprised by the fact that he was a thousand percent honest, yeah. right? Because what do people say, like, oh, I'm not thinking about my future. No, he said, look, I'm really happy here. Four times in 45 seconds, he said it. Yeah, I'm really, really happy here. Like... Essentially, I'm paraphrasing here. I don't have the exact quote, but like, do I think I'll be here my entire career? Probably not. But yeah, I'm really so happy. You never know what. Tomorrow, you never know what the future, yeah, what always. the future is going to bring. He's not saying, and, and he also said like, because you can tell his dad was a professional footballer and he knows how the media works and he's well coached. He's like, guys, please put the whole context. Yeah, I am happy here, it's a big but headline. you don't know what the future holds. Yeah, if you just run a headline, and I'm sure some of our colleagues have done today. Yeah. Oh, like, who nobody knows what the future, you know, Holland puts himself out there. No, he's not doing that. He's just giving you an honest answer. Let's treat this like grown-ups. But we also knew that he was never going to stay there for 15 years anyway, right? I think the plan very much from the Holland clan was always, you go there, but this is my, but I mean, he's there, you win a lot, and yeah. then you go to... But I think this tells you else. what his state of mind yeah, is right now. for sure. Arsenal went away to Sheffield United and won 6-0. Six. Were they that good or were Sheffield United that bad, Jules? They were 5-0 up after 39 minutes, Gab. I've never seen anything like that. Sheffield United making a change after 15 minutes. Um, I think they were excellent Arsenal on the, on the back of the recent Premier League performances that they've put up. They've won again with scoring at least five goals, which is the third away game in a row that they did, which and never Kai happened Harvard before. Kai Havertz scoring. Kai Havertz and assisting as well. Declan Rice. On, so everybody was great. They even took Bukayo Saka half time, uh, off a half time. But you have to say that Sheffield United are a terrible team. And when the manager decided, hey, why not play a back four? Because it's such a good idea to play a back four against this team and the form that yeah. they're in. It's even worse. So it was an embarrassment, really. And I think it's not good. It's not a good look for the Premier League. And I, I know in Italy right now, there's quite a lot of talk about going from 20 to 18 clubs, which the Premier League will never do. However, I think there are seasons and times where this league will be better with 18 and not two teams. Nothing, I've got nothing against Burnley and Vinny yeah, as our friend and Chief United. But when you have two teams with 13 points, in March, this is not a good look for your for your league. It's not, but I mean, this is the reality of what football's become. We think this is normal. We think teams getting 95 points in a season is normal. Uh, it's not. Uh, no, um, but... That's, do you have a problem with the Sheffield United fans leaving early? Like no, absolutely 20, not. Yeah, neither do I. I, I think you're absolutely entitled to do that. A 3-0. Have you, when you've been to games as a paying customer, you ever walked out early? Paris Saint-Germain ever been, upset you so much? No, I've never been in that situation, though, when my team... Maybe the remontada would have left. I had been there and paid for my ticket, but that's it. Nottingham Forest have been charged with their reaction at the final whistle following the defeat against Liverpool on Saturday, last Saturday. But referee Paul Tierney, Gab, will be on VAR duty next week when Arsenal take on Brentford. Given his, his uh, technical error with the draw ball in that Forest-Liverpool game... Are you surprised that he's actually still in, kind of involved at the weekend? Yeah, I, I, I'm shocked, frankly. I, I, I like the way Howard Webb has owned up to yeah. people make mistakes. Even This is a technical mistake. This is not a mistake of judgment. This is not acceptable. No. I think 
he should have been, it doesn't mean he needs to be banished hard and feathered because for better or for worse, he's probably still one of the top five or six referees in the Premier yeah. League. But you say, hey, you done screwed up. You're going to sit this one out. Go read the laws of the game. <laughs> you know, hey, simple as. Just own it a little bit. And by the way, that decision, and obviously it didn't lead directly to the Liverpool goal, blah, blah, blah. And who knows, right? But ultimately the perception is going to be that this is yeah. a big impact on relegation and big impact on the title Massive. race. Aston Villa have reported losses of more than 120 million pounds. And some have suggested, Gab, that they might, need, they might end up breaching league profit and sustainability rules. I think we're going to see a lot of stories yeah. like this. Aston Villa say they won't. Um, Aston Villa have a bunch of nerd accountants who are looking over the numbers. The Premier League have a bunch of nerd accountants who are looking through the numbers. Yeah. It should be very transparent and very black and white. That's what's really critical about this process. I like the fact that they have this process coming in, but in the end, it has to be transparent and they have to explain it. I think they did do actually with Everton because there was a dispute and then they got a mechanism to rule on the dispute. Okay, we can debate, oh, what's the right punishment? Six points, 10 points, but nobody's gonna dispute yeah. that they breached. So it's important that, that this comes this comes through. Um, I know Wes Eden's and Nassif Sawiris are not morons. And if they greenlit this level of spending, it's because they have a plan. So sure. I'd be very surprised if they're actually yeah. done for this. Yeah.